Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel, and I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank have inspired me. I hope they can inspire you as well. We'll have links below this video to their sites. They are Rabbi Shalom Arash, Rabbi Laser Brody, Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansour, Rabbi Yuval Ovadja, Rabbi Alon Anava, um, Nisan Baruch Black, uh, David Sachs, Rabbi Michael Skobach, uh, Jews for Duties, and I forgot Rabbi Daniel um, Asur. Um, let's see, where am I up to? <laughs> um, Rabbi David Asher, Rabbi Yoram Uvein, but they'll all be underneath, link below in case I left someone out. Also, if you've never checked out this channel before and you'd like to see my first video that explains what MLM for the Soul means, what it stands for, what I'm doing, that will also be posted right below this video. So today's part nine. Uh, the continuation of Pirkei Avos from this wonderful book from Art School. I will have a link below to Art School as well. And Pirkei Avos, Ethics of the Fathers. So I'm up to the second half of Perek Revi'i, and I stopped at 14, which is Yudalit, so now I'm up to Ted Vav. So Ted Vav, uh, Rabbi Elazar ben Shamua Omer Yi Chavod, Talmid Cha, Chaviv Alecha Kishalach, Chavod Chavercha, Kemora Rabach, Kemora Rabach, Kemora Shamayim. So Rabbi Lazar ben Shamua says, Let the honor of your student be as dear to you as your own. The honor of your colleague is the reverence for your teacher, and the reverence for your teacher as the reverence of heaven. So when it says, the honor of your student, if rendering honor to others is so important that one should always treat them as though they are on a higher level than they really are. So that's what you got to do. And then when it says about the reverence of your teacher, the comparison of a teacher to Hashem means that one should accept his teacher's opinion, even though he disagrees, just as if he did not question Hashem's word. So... If your teacher, as long as he's a Reish Hamayim and he's, he's, you know, not making up his own laws, then yeah, you have to give him that uh, honor and that respect. Okay, Ted Zayin, Rabbi Yehuda, Omer, Havei Zahir, B'Talmud, Sheshigigat, Talmud, Ola, Zado. Rabbi Yehuda says, Be meticulous in study, for a careless misinterpretation is considered tantamount to willful transgression. So when it talks about a careless misinterpretation, misinterpretation is judged so harshly only if it was due to the student's failure to apply himself according to his capacity. A sincere mistake is regarded as an unintentional error. There you go. Yud Zayim, Rabbi Shimon, Amir, Shosha Ketarim Haim, Keter Torah, Vecheter Kuhuna, Vecheter Malchut, Vecheter Shem Tov, Ole Al Gabehen. You might have heard this one before. Rabbi Shimon says there are three crowns, the crown of, to of, to the crown of Torah, the crown of priesthood, and the crown of kingship, but the crown of a good name surpasses them all. So when he's saying about a crown of good names, this crown adorns someone whose deeds and behaviors earn him the respect and affection of his fellows. Even scholars, priests, and kings are lacking if they fail to earn this crown. So if you have those other crowns, but you don't have a good name, then, you know, those others don't really matter as much. Okay, Yudchet, Rabbi Nehorai Omer, Havei Golel Makom Limkom Torah, Ba'al Tomar Shehi, Tova Acharecha, Sheva Chavercha, Yikhaimuha Biyadecha, Ve'el Bin... Binatcha al tisa'ein. So Rabbi Nehor, Nehorai says, Exile yourself to a place of Torah and do not assume that it will come after you. For it is your colleagues who will cause it to remain with you. And do not rely on your, on your own understanding. Uh, so that's from Proverbs. So when it says, Exile yourself to a place of Torah, one should uproot himself and move to a place where there are Torah scholars whom to learn and be stimulated. And then when it says, Then it will come after you, meaning that the Torah, i.e. the scholars, will follow you if you move to a place currently devoid of Torah. Usually not the case. And um, when it says, for it is your colleagues, through stimulating debate, who will cause it to remain with you. So when you have that back and forth, it's, it stays with you because you're interested. So at, according to Rashi, this explains the beginning of the Mishnah. One must live in a Torah environment because it is only in association with fellow students that Torah can be properly studied. And then when it says about do not rely um, on your own understanding, it means uh, by studying alone in an environment devoid of Torah scholarship. You know, if you're alone and you're the type of person who can't, you know, do it. It's, for women, it's different. This is talking about men, so um, it's not the case. Okay, you tet, Rabbi Yanai Omer, Engi Adenu lo mi shalvat harisha imba ak lo mi yisurei hatzadikim. Rabbi Yanai says, it is not in our power to explain either the tranquility of the wicked or the suffering of the righteous. And that's that's a big question we've always dealt with throughout history. So when it talks about it's not in our power, we cannot know for sure if what befalls each of them is indeed a blessing or a calamity. We must therefore abstain from passing judgment in either case and not permit our own short-sighted view of events to influence our decision. That's according to Brad Hirsch. So we don't necessarily know. Don't think that something looks bad, it's actually good. You, in the end, we'll know when when Mashiach comes or when we're in Hebrew or when we are, come to our judgment day. 
פסוכף, רבי מתיה בן חרש אומר, הווי מקדים בשלום כל אדם, בשלום כל אדם, סיום מבהווי זנב לאריות, ואל תירוש לשועלים. So Rabbi Masya ben Kharash says, initiate a greeting to every person and be a tail to lions rather than a head to foxes. So when he talks about um, being a tail to lions, it's better to be a follower of the righteous from whom you can learn and a leader of common people. And when he talks about greeting, uh, this doesn't say it there, but I know this is a story of Ramosha Feinstein, who every Sunday where he lived, I think he lived in Muncie, would go by some, I don't know, nunnery or something and, and say hi to the women, wish them a good week and bless them. So he always would do that. I remember hearing that story. Then, let's see, Chafal, Rabbi Yaakov Amer, Ha'olam hazeh dome leprozor, b'fnei ha'olam haba, ha'tkein atzmacha beprozor, k'dei sh'et tikhanez l'tir rak lin. So when Rabbi Yaakov says, this world is like a carter before the world to come, prepare yourself in the carter so that you may enter the banquet hall. So in the Talmud of Odizara 3a, there was a similar saying, the world is like the eve of Shabbat, and the world to come is like Shabbat. He who prepares on the eve of Shabbat will have food to eat on Shabbat. Okay, so that's, okay, so Chafet, who are you, Omer, same uh, rabbi? Yafa she'achat b'tshuva ma'asim tovim ba'olam hazeh mikol chayei ha'olam haba. Yafa she'achat shal korat ruach ba'olam haba mikol chayei ha'olam hazeh. This is, again, another famous expression you may have heard. He used to say, better one hour of repentance and good deeds in this world than the entire life of the world to come, and better one hour of spiritual bliss in the world to come than the entire life of this world. So when it talks about better one hour, the mission is dealing with two different concepts. One in this world, can one, uh, and I'm sorry, only in this world, can one elevate himself spiritually. In the world to come, he can only enjoy the rewards for his accomplishments here. On the other hand, all the bliss of all the generations in the history of the world cannot equal an hour of bliss in the world to come. And uh, yeah, so you can, here is only where you can accrue all the merits and in the next world where you get the rewards. So you got to do the work here and the results happen there. Okay, Chav Gimel, Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, Omer Altir, so Rabbi Shimon ben Allah says, Do not appease your fellow in the time of his anger, do not console him while he's dead lies before him, and do not question him about his vow at the time he makes it. And do not attempt to see him at the time of his degradation. So when it talks about, about do not appease, Rabbi Shimon ben Allah says, The message concerns the importance of proper timing. To reason with or appease someone at a time of great passion is counterproductive. So when they're going through, they're in the heat of a battle, the heat of something, that's not the time when you want to, you know, like, uh, say something that uh, it's not going to, it's not going to be the best time to talk to them. Okay. Chav Dalaz, Shmuel HaKatanamer, bin fall ayyvecha al tusmach, uvitka shlo al yagel nibecha pen yireh Hashem v'rabe inav heishiv me'alav apo. This is also something you may have heard before. Shimon HaKatan says, When your enemy falls, be not glad, and when he stumbles, let your heart not be joyous. Lest Hashem see, and it displeases him, and he will turn his wrath from him to you. So that last Pasuk that was saying that, that was from Proverbs as well. So when it talks about when your enemy falls, this entire dictum is a quotation from the book of Proverbs. Shimon HaKatan apparently was in the habit of quoting it when admonishing people. And so what it means is, like, if you are, um, if you do that, then Hashem will turn to you. Like, instead of him looking at them, he's going to, Wanna, you know, he'll be angry with you. Okay, Chafhe Alisha Ben Avuya Mer Halomeid Yelad Lamahu Dome Le Dio Chetuva Al Niyar Chadash Halomeid Lakan Lamahu Dome Le Dio Chetuva Al Niyar Machuk. So Alisha Ben Avuya says, Who, one who studies Torah as a child, to what can he be likened? To ink on fresh paper. And one who studies Torah as an old man, to what can he be likened? To ink written, to ink written on smudged paper. When it talks about fresh paper, which retains ink legibly and permanently, this is a lesson on a person's duty to learn Torah while he's young and his mind is fresh and receptive. The younger you are, the better usually your mind can do it. Although, some people it's not that way, but, you know, that's always a better way to start when you're young. Chavav, Rabbi Yossi ben Yehuda, Ish Kfar Habav, Leomer, Halameid min haktan lumahu domeh, lechol anavim kehot vishotel yayin migito, valmeid min azkein lumahu domeh, so Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda of Kfar Bahabab, he says, when he learns Torah from the young to what is he likened, to one who eats unripe grapes or drinks unfermented wine from his vat. But when he learns Torah from the old, to what can he be likened? To one who eats ripe grapes or drinks aged wine. So um, that's pretty much self-explanatory. The next one, Chav Zayin, 27. Rabbi Meir Omer, Al Tisakel be Kankan Ella Bemashi Yesh, Bo Yesh Kankan Kadash Malay Ashan, Yashan Shafilo Kadash Inbo. So Rabbi Elazar, I'm sorry, Rabbi Meir says, Do not look at the vessel, but what is in it. There is a new vessel filled with old wine and an old vessel that does not even contain new wine. 
So when he's talking about do not look at the vessel, this contrasts with the view in Mishnah 26. Do not draw general conclusions based on age. Some young men have achieved great levels of learning than older men, and also uh, one should not judge others only by their appearance. So you can never tell. Okay, now Chaf uh, 28. Rabbi Elazar HaKapar Omer HaKina Vatava V'Hakava Motzi'ina Tadam Mina Olam. And again, another famous expression you may have heard. Rabbi Elazar HaKapar says, Jealousy, lust, and glory remove a man from this world. So when it's talking about jealousy, lust, and glory, these base instincts and appetites prevent a person from enjoying life. So you want to basically stay away from those. Achav Tet, 29. Sorry, I keep saying it too fast. But I forgot to say this is the last passage uh, in here, or verse, I don't know how they say it. He used to say, the newborn will die, the dead will live again, and the living will be judged, in order that they know, teach, and be, be, become aware that he is Hashem, he is the fashioner, he is the creator, he is the discerner, he is the judge, he is the witness. He is the plaintiff. He will judge. Blessed is he before whom there is no iniquity, no forgetfulness, no favoritism, and no acceptance of bribery. For everything is his, meaning Hashem. Know that everything is according to the reckoning, and, less, and let not your evil inclination promise you that the grave will be an escape for you. For against your will were you created, and against your will you were born, and against your will you live. Against your will you die, and against your will you are destined to give an account before the king who rules over kings. The Holy One blessed is he. So pretty self-explanatory there. And just to finish it up, this Perak, Rabbi Hanani ben Akash Omer, Rav Tzach Kaddish Baruch, who was a quote at Yisrael, Lepi Chach Herba Lehem Torah, Mitzvah Shnei Mar Hashem Chapeis, Laman Sitko Yagil Torah Yadir. Rabbi Hanani ben Akash says, The Holy One, blessed is He, wished to confer merit upon Israel. Therefore He gave him Torah Mitzvah in abundance, as it says, Hashem desired for the sake of it, meaning Israel's righteousness, that the Torah be made great and glorious. Again, that's from Yeshaya. So I want to say in closing that that last, that last verse, I think, was really hit on a, a lot of things that we have to be aware that we, we, uh, ha we're, we're here for a purpose and we have to do Hashem's will and, and what, he, what is right in His eyes because in the end He's going to judge everything and we have to uh, know that we're not going to get away with anything at all. So let's all do what's right and that we all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final everlasting base. Hamidish, Amen, and thanks for watching.